All right guys, so we're back. We are back with another Porsche on this channel. I think the last update I did was on the blue Cayman that we bought. This car is actually a Vera's car. So this is a, I don't remember what this was. I don't remember what year it was. 2001 maybe? Going out on a limb. This is a Guards Red 996, regular Carrera. I'm not sure if this is peanut butter or dark camel. A lot of people don't like this color interior. It doesn't age well. All these cars with the tan interior are like that. The story with this car is, we have a couple from Florida sent this up here. And they had taken it to the Porsche dealership. They had struts and something else done to it. New struts put on it, something else. It was $10,000 bill. Um, I'm not exactly sure the, the arrangement of time, the order and time things happen. The car went back, I believe, to get a water pump put on, and now it's making an atrocious sound. And not rod knock, it's like a bearing, maybe a new water pump, I don't know. Uh, we have not put it up, we literally just got it off the transport. Uh, it's set here overnight, we backed it in this morning. And here we are. We haven't lifted it up. We haven't looked at it. Nothing at all. Uh, so like I said, it sounds like a bearing or even like something in the water pump's broken. Could be power steering. The first thing we're going to do is probably take the dry belt off of it and start it and see how it sounds after that. Now, I remember we just had one of these in, these 996 is yellow. Very easy to work on. A very simple car. Um, you have to have a lift though. Everything comes out from the bottom. Uh, probably one of the easiest cars I had to work on in a long time. You know, we're used to doing V10 and five stuff and this or that, you know, all more complex. But without any further ado, let's start this thing before we put up on the lift. I hate to even start it again. We'll start this for a second for you guys. You can hear what it sounds like. You ready? <laughs> Could it be timing chain tensioner? I, I don't think that's timing chain tensioner noise. It's not IMS bearing noise. This car is a later version bearing. It shouldn't be that. Let's just see here. It looks good under here, man. It looks real good. That noise, it could be something with the clutch. Something, it's definitely something off the drive assembly in the front of the engine. Will that stay up? Yes, sir, it will. Let's lift it up first, look underneath of it, see what we can see. All right, so today we have a standard review. This helps the channel out a little bit. If you guys go check this out, put a link in the description. So this is a launch scanner. And this was sent to us to review for the channel. This is a pretty hefty scanner. This is a launch uh, 919E. See, it has little cameras on it, has a little kickstand. This is bi-directional scanner. These are, ah, heck man, I don't remember three or 400 bucks, some, somewhere in that range. And like we have our Autel stuff, we have other scanners, we have the BMW software for the BMWs, but for Porsche stuff, we're limited. And I think the problem with our blue Cayman is that the spoiler is coated off. From the research I've done, we have no lights, no function, no nothing. And hopefully, we've been waiting, hopefully this is going to fix our issue. So we got some of the little packets in there to take the moisture out, having a really nice carrying case. We'll unlock her here for you guys. And you have little storage compartments up here for whatever connectors you want, whatever you want to keep in there. And if you want to carry this in a car with you a lot, you can put some basic small tools in there, a couple of screwdrivers, whatever. So let's go ahead and hook this up to the blue Cayman. And we'll see if we get the spoiler to reconnect with the car. And we'll go and scan everything else in that car and make sure everything else is good to go. And we just run a basic vehicle report. It's gonna scan the whole entire car. And we have a DME code, we have uh, lean codes for the converters, things like that. We have another one for the gateway. Let's just touch that. And it should tell you all about no signal. The gateway, DMV, warm catalyst efficiency below threshold bank one and two. I wonder why that is. Um, and air conditioning code, 
This one is actually pretty easy to use. Uh, communication with PCM display, communication gateway, control unit. This fault code can be ignored. This could be something when the battery is dead. And uh, shows you all the stuff like that. So let's go in here. Let's try to figure out how to reset our spoiler, I guess. Then we could do special actuation, actuation test with a spoiler. And then we could actually run the spoiler up and down, extend spoiler, retract spoiler. Um, we're looking here to see if we could code it back on. I think that's what's been going on. There is functions in here. We're just going to have to dig through all this. We got to see where we code different stuff, reset adaptions, all that kind of stuff. This is a pretty extensive scanner. So if you're looking at something for your Porsche, even your Toyota, your Honda, your Chevy, your Ford, or your BMW, this is a pretty good tool for all that. This will also code injectors. This will also service and reset your tire pressure monitoring systems, everything like that. This has this full access to our PSM, all the Porsche stuff. And uh, yeah, definitely a cool little tool. Like I said before, check out the link in the description. And we're going back to the video. All right, I'll tell you some horror stories, boys. Here we go, ready? So, the dealership did, I'll let Phil go on this side of me. They did new lower or forward control arms, but not the coffin arms. Sway bar links, new bolts. They did all these struts. Um, that coffin arm, I mean, let's be honest here. Let me grab a pry bar. We'll do a little inspection here, boys. I know you guys like these kind of videos. What's all wrong? That coffin arm is not great. That's about the, like my, my blue Cayman is. You can, hit, you can probably hear it. You probably can't hear it. It's not terrible, but it's not great. That one's a little bit better. Um, yeah. Those inner bushings usually don't go bad. Usually it's the ball joint right here. So they have this brake line in the holder. The one in the back is not in the holder. It's zip tied up. I mean, that's fine. I don't know. Uh, all the quilt lines are getting a lot older. They're getting a little bit dry. Are they bad? No, of course not. They're not bad. Uh, we already have found the problem was wrong with this car. We'll show you here in a second. Um, but I'll give you a spoiler. It's not the engine. 99% chance. Sure. It's not the engine. Um, so this car, you think you look at this, you're like, okay, so this side of the transmission is pretty clean, right? It's not bad. This side over here is dirty and nasty. So if I can smack fill up with the light, you can see up in here, that is like, totally gone and it has coolant residue coming down and the line on the very top as coolant goes in through the oil separator that's the oil separator uh, that is original that is garbage that is totally totally shot and needs to be replaced um, that's leaking coolant down the side of it as you know that has a coolant in and out line on top of those uh, if we have some mixing going on that's going to be Number one culprit. Um, we almost have to do that first. We, we'll keep going here. We'll keep going. So we have new stress on the back, new forward arms on the back, not new coffin arms. So I don't know. It has a little bit of play in that joint. It's not bad. That's kind of the same. I mean, I don't know why the dealership didn't want to do that. I don't know. They have new sway bar bushings in here, right? Um, they did not touch the uppers at all. I don't know if I can get this in here or not. I can't check that in this way. I'll take the wheel off, check those. Uh, but these cars have a lot of control arms. You can see down here, these lines don't, they're not horrible. They are original. These aren't actually dry rotted. The one back here, right here, you can see actually the dry rot on it. It's kind of normal for its age, to be honest with you. Nothing looks very expanded. So whatever oil, whatever oil it has in a coolant system, one of the two isn't much. Um, 
or it's not been there long. One of the two. And these are squeeze clamps. Here is a regular clamp, which by the way, is totally fine to use in these cars, in case you're wondering. Somebody in the comments will get what I'm getting at on that. Um, we don't really see too much going on up here. They did not put the clip back in the, I believe that one is for the ABS deal. They have a zip tied to the, to the hose. Definitely not a dealership type thing they should be doing. If they did that, I'm sure they did. Uh, this car does have new brake disc and brakes on it. I'm just looking to see here. It's a little bit greasy here and there, which is a little bit typical on this backside. Um, this engine doesn't, it gets difficult. And everybody in the comments is going to say, it doesn't look like it has 59,000 miles on it. But just think of the age of this car. I think it was two, not 2000, 2001, I don't know. Um, that's a pretty old car. You're going to have a little bit of that. You can see right here, you're getting a little bit of crispiness right there on that hose. This hose deteriorating a little bit, but they're not bulging. They're not, they're not ready to be replaced just quite yet. Let's, uh, let's let it down next. We may take this belt off and start it. Water dripping out of the exhaust, condensation. Uh, take the belt off and start it next and see if we can figure out where the noise is coming from. All right, first things first, we got the air box taken out, but let's check. Oil and the coolant. There's no coolant in it. There's a microscopic amount of oil on there. That oil separator though, boys and girls, they can't see it back here. So how the oil separator on this has to be taken out, if I remember right. We gotta take each engine mount out. We gotta lower it down. And whenever we get to it from underneath, I think we have to take this intake manifold off and then it allows you all the way back and look at it. It sounds terrible, it's actually not that bad. So the first thing we're gonna do um, is take this off. Actually, before we do that, before we do that, I'm going to set an example for you guys. And we're going to use our phone. This You should always do this. Save yourself hassle. We're going to take a picture of the belts. That way, when we go put this bad way back together, you don't have to stop what you're doing and look it up, right? Okay. Let's go ahead and take this out of there because what we don't want it to do is to crap the crank pulley. And throw that belt. So the belt is brand new. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to start the car just for a second. Make sure everything's clear back here on these 996s. You don't want the old uh, mass airflow plug to get in there. Somebody's put a new pulley, new, new pulley, new pulley. So it has new air pulleys on it. There's, that's our problem. Okay. That's, oh God. Look at this. Actually, this is the water pump down here. I remember it. Yeah, look at this. Okay. Dealership, what are you what are you doing, dealership, right? So uh let's start it. Verify that was the noise. Uh that's like that's bad. 
Um, I'm trying to remember how this car was set up. So this was, okay, this is power steering. I was thinking that was, this is not the water pumps on the bottom, so is the thermostat. Power steering pump is new for some reason. Out there like trying to like maybe fix that noise and like just totally guess wrong or if that was at an earlier date, I don't know. We're not judging anybody, right? Now I was telling Phil, when you go to dealerships nowadays, it's not like it used to be. Um, whenever you go in there, it's all young kids working. Maybe you have one old guy in the back controlling everything. When you take something to a dealership, and not every dealership's like this, most of them are though. If you work at one, you're watching the videos and you disagree with this, congratulations, your dealership isn't like this, but usually it's just kids working, not a lot of experience. And stuff gets overlooked. We're not judging anybody, all right? for sure that the oil separator is the little bit of oil in the coolant. We have to do that next. Um, so it has no coolant at all in it. Smell that? It's broken dreams right there, boys. It smells a little bit rich. Um, so we have to figure out, is, does it have an engine problem? By looking at the oil separator, I highly, highly doubt it. We may have to do a leak down test on it to make sure. However, to do a leak down test, we have to fill it full of coolant. Here's the catch of it. We can't just put water in it for right now because it's getting close to freezing at nighttime. We don't want to do that. Uh, so what we may do, we may sacrifice some coolant. They have green coolant in this, more than likely. Let's see if we can see enough of it. Yes, it has green coolant in it. Um, Let's pull a hose off the bottom next and let's verify that, try to get some coolant to come out. Let's see if there's oil in it or like what's going on with that. Let's do that next. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and pull a little clamp off here. bucket was not totally clean. It had a little bit of grease in it, but the water looks brown. It looks like there is no coolant in it. It's only water, which is scary. So you can see this 911 ate some Taco Bell and it ended wrong for it. Um, yeah, looks like a poopy doll in there. It's not near to the extent that yellow one we had was. That one was that was like probably eight quarts of oil on that one. This one is still, everything's still real thin. Um, so there is that. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the plates off of this, the covers, the coil packs out. We need to, first of all, refill the coolant and we're going to essentially do a leak down test on it and see what we got going on. Now, however, here's a key ingredient to all this. This car does not smell like coolant at all out the tailpipe. It smells a little bit rich. This car has, we'll be able to tell when we pull the plugs out if it's burning. Now, if it's the oil separator, which we're 95% sure it's the oil separator, means it's just barfing garbage all down the side of it. Um, if it is that, or if it is the oil cooler oil rings, which we'll replace those too, we do not, we're not gonna see any coolant burning on the spark plugs, period. Now, if we have coolant burning on the spark plugs, we have a cylinder head problem, uh, but let's go ahead and take that apart next. And just for the record, nobody's had these bolts off, so the dealership did not check this. So what we did, we pulled the spark plugs out, we pulled the air filter out, A little sand in the old box there. 
There you go. That is, uh, we're gonna call that less than desirable. We started it several times, it feels like, man, this thing stinks. I'm like, oh, it's probably rich, the air filter's probably dirty. That's a, uh, that's an understatement. That's an understatement right there, boys. Anyhow, anywho, anyhow, we took the plugs out. Two of them were less than finger tight, and one, where was it at here? This guy was a little bit cross-threaded. It's got one thread in the middle there. You see it's kind of shiny. However, if you can see, none of these are burning coolant. We have no coolant smelling the exhaust at all. None at all. These are not really the right plugs for it. These are Bosch, four-prong Bosch. Whenever we go to the NGK, uh, Iridium, the IX ones, or even on the BMWs, the Ruthenium, Ruthenium, NGKs, there's a noticeable difference on how clean it burns and how much power it has. That's just my two cents on it. Um, a few other things, we need to let it down and check the oil level. Um, here is what we got out in the bucket. I think we showed you that a while ago. It looks like Phil ate Taco Bell one night and had a rager. And, uh, but it's not thick. Remember the yellow car was like goo coming out of it. It was so much in it. Uh, so I think this car is still easily savable. Uh, what we're gonna have to do though, we're gonna have to, uh, if we let this sit outside overnight and it's below freezing, it's gonna be a problem. So before we could do that, we're gonna have to sacrifice a jug of coolant and some water just to put back in it for right now. Uh, obviously we gotta take the water pump out. That's totally fine. Um, and that kind of business. So yeah, the dealership's done some stuff to it, but it's real erratic what they did. I do not know why that is. <clears throat> there again, we're not bashing anybody, I'm just saying, there's questionable stuff, why they did some things, not the other. I don't know, I haven't talked to the owner uh, since we got up on the list, so we don't know. Let's let it down real quick. We'll check this real quick, and we have some coolant in the oil, or some water in the oil. So what we're gonna have to do, uh, we will definitely have to do a leak down check on this. Okay, so let's go to the phone with the owner. Um, what we're gonna do at this point in time, we're 99.9% .9 sure it's not a cracked head. We have no exhaust gases in anything. You smell the, the diary in the bucket there. Doesn't smell like exhaust. Uh, by looking at the oil air separator and it's leaking coolant down the side of it, you can see the residual over it and it looks like the bottom uh, accordion hose is actually like crushed and like broken uh, and very dilapidated. We're gonna go with that. There's a few things we have to do here. For one, we need to replace oil air separator. Two, while we're there, right at it, we're going to replace the oil cooler. Those are the two main leaking points of this car. Um, we have no coolant burning on the spark plugs at all, none. That tells me that what's gonna happen is our leak down test and come back, there's not a problem with that. Uh, to do the leak down test, we have to fill the coolant up. I kinda don't wanna do that and then park it and let it sit for the next week while parts are getting here because what's gonna happen is gonna keep leaking more and more and more water in the coolant and cooling the oil while it's out there. And a lot of times oil air separator can interchange both. If it's the oil cooler, usually it's only oil in the coolant, not coolant in the oil in these cars. Now, a lot of guys that just go and replace just the oil rings on the cooler, we can't do that because if we still have the problem, you don't know if the cooler is cracked on the inside. Just like we did on the yellow car, we just put a new one on it, a new, was it Siemens or whatever the hell it was, uh, legit brand one on it. We also need the water pump and the thermostat. Um, so just to recap, water pump, thermostat, oil air separator, and oil cooler is what we need at this very minute. And probably uh, some time with the garden hose and uh, flushing that out. We also need, uh, if we still have oil filters for this car or not, we'll have to look up that. We'll need an oil change or two for this to get this thing back uh, correct. We may put some arrangement of a little engine flush additive in it before we drain this, just to kind of break everything loose and we drain it, we get a bunch of it out. Uh, so 
at this point in time, our total cost, I would say with some coolant, with the oil change or two, we're probably going to be in this, just a wild guess, probably seven, eight hundred bucks. That's my guess, just some parts. And to me, that sounds like nothing. I understand that is a lot of money. Uh, we're dealing with these M5s and stuff. That's like almost free. But I'm very well keeping in mind, this is not my car. And this is somebody else's money. So we're definitely trying to wrangle in that. How much would the dealership charge to uh, do those things? I don't even know, man. A lot. Uh, she did look up the water pump was not in the paperwork had been replaced, which is good because it has not been replaced. And that's that. Uh, why is it filled at 59,000 miles? I don't know. We don't know that kind of stuff. Um, this depends on how long it's been mixing oil in the coolant. Um, if it had some oil in the coolant, that could deteriorate the rubber seal in the water pump, could make the bearing go out. How it works is once that seal gets bad, it starts leaking water into the bearing, usually dripping out below, but it's not dripping out below and that runs the bearing and makes the water pump go out. Could that be the case? It could. Uh, so that's the case of this, but all the hoses are not soggy. Uh, that tells me this problem has not been going on that long, uh, which is probably a very good thing, which means our radiators are probably good. All that stuff's probably good. And our coolant is not thick like glue, like the yellow car was. That's going to be it guys. Thanks for watching. We're back very soon with another video on this bad boy showing you exactly what we did to fix it and all the breakdown of how we did all the work. See you later.